Hi, my name is Billy Godbold. I'm the Bowtrain Engineering Group Manager for Competition Cams. The MSC process, or our microsurface enhancement process, is a kinetic energy based system that goes in and polishes the surface. So if you think about the cam surface or any ground surface will be like a mountain range. So what we're trying to do is take that mountain range and radius off the top without getting all the way to the bottom. So the microsurface, the MSE process, is just a way of trying to improve the surface. Yeah, basically if you look at roughness, Roughness is high frequencies. It's those mountain peaks, those real sharp ones go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. The waviness would be like, you think about rolling hills. You know, the waviness, you know, across a camshaft, you may have three, four, five, six, ten waves. You'll have thousands of little peaks. So roughness brings down all the little peaks, but waviness is that overall contour. Some slight contour in a camshaft can be helpful but you don't want to have multiple waves in it because if you have multiple waves in it, the highest pressure will be on the top of those waves. And belt polishing generally makes waviness worse, where the MSE process always reduces waviness. When you go and spread out the area like this, if we go from a 10% bearing area to a 50% bearing area, the microscopic stress, where a failure would start, is five times less. So you're one fifth the load. So your cam acts five times stronger than it would with the old design with the 10% bearing area. Your new 50% bearing area spreads the load out five times more so it acts five times stronger. Everything fails when the stresses are higher than material strength. So what we're trying to do in the MSE process is to spread out the loads over more of the material. So if you ever look at a camshaft, if you've ever seen one where it's starting to edge load or whatever, what's happening there is you're putting more load into that small area than we can handle. So the more we can spread out the load, the more we can spread out, the less stress there is at any microscopic point. And it really is important to remember, every failure starts microscopically before it goes into a macroscopic failure. If we can make the microscopic load smaller, we'll have less failures microscopically and they can never propagate and become macroscopic or big time failures. Okay, the most common way of polishing camshafts in our industry is a belt polisher. The problem with belt polishing is no matter what you do on the backing of the tape to try to grab and put uniform pressure across the lobe, it's basically impossible to make it truly uniform. You know, so you get more pressure or less pressure there. And what happens is when you belt polish is you add to the waviness of the camshaft. Now that waviness may be way less than a tenth of a thousandth of an inch, but like we said, all failures happen microscopically. So if one part of the cam is a half a tenth higher than another part of the cam, the part that's higher is going to get all the load until it's worn down to be even with the other one. So the MSE process is the only process we found that when you actually polish the camshaft, because we're putting this equal loads across the whole camshaft, that it actually polishes more off the high spots than the low spots, and it actually decreases the waviness. So the, this cam surface after MSE will be slightly flatter than it was before MSE. Micro painting is a different way. You know, basically when you start about talk about any type of polishing, you have to have some energy to create the polish. Micro painting uses kinetic energy in the painting mechanism to hit the surface, and to polish it. The problem with painting is you can get some craters, which isn't terribly bad, but you can also get rises up on the edge of the craters. Imagine taking a piece of steel, taking a ball peen hammer, and hitting the steel as hard as you can. You'll leave a little dent, but you'll also leave a high rise on each side. Now, micro painting is always gonna leave some of those rises. The other problem is if you do it with a micro peen, like a very small painting, then you have all of this basically like sand, whether it's metal or abrasive or actually silicon carbide, you're going to have some grit in the camshaft. As you look to today's engines where you have so many variable cam systems, imagine trying to get all of that grit and all of that gunk out of your camshaft after doing hundreds of camshafts. It's going to cause some extra problems. So while it's an interesting process, 
it definitely has some negatives that we'd have to look over. Back to the whole idea that every polishing technique requires some catalyst. So in electro polishing, you're using electricity for the catalyst. Also in electro polishing, you're generally putting something that's either harder or softer than the camshaft that you're trying to plate the camshaft. So we really don't want to use electricity because it's going to create, you know, heat as it goes in there. And so, you know, as you try to run current through the camshaft, you're going to create heat. You're going to kneel part of the surface. Then you're going to blast it. And then you're going to stick something else on it that's going to come off. So basically, electro polishing is probably a really bad idea on camshafts. Sounding like a broken record, there always has to be some energy source that creates the, to, to speed a polishing. In the rim system, you're using a chemical process. This is an acid process that goes onto the camshaft or the surface gear, whatever it is, and it annuls the surface. So the iron in the surface gets etched, it's made softer, and then you polish that off with media, leaving a better surface underneath. Now, if something is just pure iron, that can be really, really nice. But in camshafts, you're always dealing with higher carbon content. So the metallurgy of it will have carbides in the iron lattice. As you anneal those, that iron lattice, you anneal the iron on it, you leave these carbides exposed. And so you imagine you have all these little high, little chunks of charcoal stuck out microscopically on the surface that the lifter will be hitting. And that's just not optimal. You want a mechanical process to polish a camshaft. We want to grind a nearly perfect surface, but any ground surface is going to have some roughness to it. So what we're trying to do is to grind the best possible surface, then come in there after grinding and just polish off the outsides, break the edge. And what we're really going after is trying to increase the bearing area. So if you imagine when you like step down on the ground, if you have like cleats, those cleats will sink down to the ground. If you have like a smooth bottom, you won't sink as far. If you have like a snowshoe, you won't sink hardly at all. So we're trying to make the most possible surface area between the roller lifter and the camshaft. So it rides over it. We don't put much stress into the camshaft. Okay, well, let's go back and we talked about the grass. Now, it'd be interesting to take somebody who's like decides Hey, I want my I want to make something just like Wrigley Field. So I found out what lawnmower they're using, and I'm going to use that. Well, it doesn't work that way. And you kind of think about what we've done over the past five to ten years. You know, we've been working through our grinding side with new dressing techniques, new carbon fiber hubs on our grinding wheel, and everything we can on our process of grinding to make the best possible surface we could. And it's very much like that, that finishing mower. If you want to go out into the hills of East Tennessee and go, I'm going to build Wrigley Field in East Tennessee. And you look at that mountain and you go in there and start running the finishing mower around the mountain, you would just tear up your finishing mower. You know, you'd, it's not going to knock down a tree. It's not going to knock down a mountain. You've got to start with a bulldozer and then a grader. And then you get in there and you start plowing. You start moving things around. You plant your seed. Eventually, after your grass is up, you can get the finishing mower. You may have spread sand a few times too. But the finishing mower is the finish, it's not the start. In the MSC process, yes, the polishing setup, which I know everybody looks at and goes, man, that looks so good. Well, yes, it does look good. But just like the finishing mower at Wrigley Field, it looks good because they did everything they needed to do before the finish mower so that the finish mower can do its job. You know, MSE is just the final way to, if you really look at it, you know, this is going to get a little geeky, so y'all hold with me for a second. But if you look at the bearing area, if you go back 10, 15 years ago, we had less than 10% bearing area. And then we were able to, through some of those process I talked, bring that up to 15%, then bring it up to 20%, 25%. Well, the nice thing about it is by going in here and running through the system where we start actually using thousands of pounds of force, to push media into the surface and mow that grass. We've made the surface area twice as much. So we've gone up from 25% to 50%, 70% bearing areas on these camshafts. That really spreads the load out better. Well, the biggest thing when you go, the, the reason to go to the MSE process, the reason you want this on your camshaft is because it spreads out the load. The reason you want to spread out the load is because that's lower stress. 
The reason you want lower stress is lower stress is always going to last longer. So you're just trying to have a camshaft that's more durable, this is going to be easier on parts, it's going to give you just trouble-free operation. Comp cams, there's no comparison.